Hey everybody, I'm Jamie Lewis, and today we're gonna to be checking out this brand new Justin Chancellor signature wah pedal from Dunlop. <laughs> Now, first of all, let me just say a big thank you to Dunlop for asking me to do this video and also to Gregor and all of my friends here at Base the World. Thanks for letting me come out and hang with y'all today. And this thing arrived at my door approximately two or three days ago. So why don't we start there with the unboxing? Riveting content, I know. All right, so far, pretty cool. It's pretty snazzy, sort of looks like a, like a box of Vans shoes or something. Let's open it up, see what's on the inside. All right, we got a pedal. Oh no, we got some, what are these? I'll check that out in a second. Here's the pedal. It's a really cool blue color. I like that. It's built like a tank. It's very, very sturdy. You're gonna be stepping on it, putting your weight on it. It can definitely hold you. And let me say this first, okay? I don't have a lot of experience with wah pedals. In fact, I've never owned one. I've never had one permanently on my board and I it's just not a sound that I use very often. So here's what I did. I wrote a kind of an aggressive prog rock song that features the bass guitar using a wah pedal. Now remember this pedal has two different wah engines, uh, a yellow one and a blue one. I'll explain a little bit more about that later. But for this passage, I used the yellow one because it's a thinner sound I just figured that was the appropriate one for this particular passage. By pushing this little red button that's here on the side, you can actually make it so that when the wah isn't engaged, uh, the fuzz still is. So if you didn't have a fuzz before, I guess you do now. Now here's my favorite trick to do with wah pedals and envelope filters, is to play a repetitive ostinato pattern, right? And then filter sweep through it really evenly and really slowly, kind of going up and down, but at the end of the passage, you push it all the way up at the height of the crescendo. <laughs> Here I am again using the blue channel on the wah just to add some emphasis to a particular melodic line. So if you like that song, there is a full transcription, including a baseless play along file and an isolated bass stem on my Patreon. You can go check that out at patreon.com slash Jamie Lewis. You can go check that out if you wanna learn how to play this song or any of the other songs that I've written. All right, so now let me just walk you through all the different features on this pedal. It's pretty straightforward. And at the end, uh, I'll play some more bass for you. So right off at the top, you can see there is a wah select because again, there are two different wah engines for this pedal. Uh, the top one is yellow, the bottom one is blue, and they both have the same controls. The, the left dial is a volume. The one on the right is for the Q or basically how wide you want the, or how noticeable you want the wah to be. So uh, if the dial is all the way to the right, it's probably the pointiest, so it's the most obvious sound. And uh, the more I move it to the left, the more subtle the wah becomes. And again, to my ears, here's what I'm hearing. The top one is labeled wah, it's yellow, and it's thin. It's gonna thin out your bass tone, kind of like what you heard uh, at the beginning of that track I just played. Uh, the blue channel is called UK filter. I don't know what that means, but the blue channel is fuller maybe a more robotic sounding wah, and that's the one that I ended up using most of the time. Next up, we've got the fuzz section, and it's pretty straightforward. There's a fuzz dial, a tone dial, and a volume. Really self-explanatory. The, the, the fuzz knob adjusts how much fuzz you're getting all the way to the left is not a lot. 
all the way to the right, we're getting into crunchy town. The tone knob is just basically, if it's all the way to the right, it's a really beefy kind of low endy fuzz. And then the further to the left we get, the more thinned out you uh, it becomes. And then the volume knob, pretty straightforward. It's the volume. Now turning on the fuzz isn't quite self-explanatory. Th there is a fuzz select switch, but it's a bit more intricate than that because we've got this red switch here on the side. They call it the fuzz ID IND control or the fuzz independent control. So basically, at its default state, this pedal is just passing dry signal, right? And as soon as I engage the wah engine, the wah turns on, but it's a dry, unaffected bass signal going into it, all right? If I turn on the fuzz, the bass is still, it's, it's dry, it's bypassed. But when I turn on the wah, now it's fuzz that's going into the wah. And when I let go, we're back to dry bypass signal. But if I push the red button here on the side, now in its default state, the dry is actually fuzz. And as I start to introduce the wah, it also has fuzz. And when I let go, it goes back to being fuzzy. That's the default state. So again, it's extremely versatile because it could be a dry wah. It could be a fuzz pedal. It could be a wah pedal with fuzz that defaults it dry. Or it can be a fuzz pedal with wah that defaults at fuzz. It's pretty awesome. And also down here at the bottom, there's a little dial that says bypass delay. So pretty much uh, the way I've got it set currently, all the way to the right, when I let go of the wah, it goes almost instantly back to my dry signal. The wah turns off. But if I come over here and I twist this knob over to the left, now what's gonna happen is the wah is on. When I let go, now the bass is dry. So it doesn't happen instantaneously. It'll delay it by, I don't know, the manual probably tells you, a few milliseconds, I'm sure, a few hundred milliseconds. Not really sure why you would want to do that. Uh, again, I don't use a lot of wah pedals, so maybe there's a reason, but I pretty much want that shit to turn off immediately uh, once I take my foot off of it. One last feature to talk about is this. It's a little topper that goes on top of the fuzz selector switch, which pretty much just evens it out so that, I don't know if you can see that, but pretty much now it's the same height as the pedal. Without it, maybe it's a half inch shorter, something like that. This is the way that Justin actually plays it. Um, rather than putting his foot parallel to the pedal, he'll keep his toes up here, but his heel on uh, this little topper. So that way, again, you can just lay your foot across and get the fuzz and the wah at the same time. All right, so let's hear what this thing sounds like in a few different musical styles, all right? We just heard prog rock. How about funk? What I'm gonna do with this example is I'm gonna bypass the fuzz completely and just use that blue wah channel to add a little bit of sparkle, some spice to bring in that spacey, funkadelic kind of tone to this bass line. All right, how about thrash metal? In this case, I'm gonna leave the fuzz on pretty much the whole time but I'm gonna bring in the blue wah channel just to emphasize a few melodic lines. Check out what it sounds like when we use that clean wah, that blue channel again, to augment sort of a funky pop rock bass line. All right, let's try some jazz rock fusion. Now, in this case, I'm going to use this red switch, the fuzz IND control. And what that's gonna do is, in its normal state, the bass is gonna be clean, but when I use the wah, it's gonna be dirty. And as soon as I let go, we're back to clean. And pretty much all I'm trying to do is use the wah and the fuzz to just add some emphasis to a couple of licks. Last, let's just give it a try with some finger funk. Now, in this case, I left the fuzz engine engaged. This is a really cool trick 
because if you can get the gain low enough, rather than distorting and fuzzing, it actually kind of acts more like a super reactive compressor. So it's cool to use on finger funk. It makes all those ghosted notes pop out. <laughs> That's all I got. I think it's a really cool pedal. Again, it's a two and one or a three and one or four. I, I don't know. I lost count. It's really easy to use. You can't screw it up. And like I said in the beginning, I don't own any wah pedals. I've never had one. This one is staying here in this studio. It's going to be here at my feet every time I do a live show on Twitch because I think it's a really great sound. So Dunlop, uh, you're not getting it back. Pre-orders start November 1st. And if you're watching this in the future, then just go get one now. And hey, Speaking of the future, if you want to see what I've been up to since I did this video, then come hang out with me on Twitch. I stream three to four days a week playing bass, hanging out with really cool guests and doing all sorts of nonsense. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And just one more time, a big thank you to Gregor and all of my friends here at Bass the World and also Dunlop for letting me do this video. So thanks guys, take care and I'll see you over on Twitch.